It's new product time. I will do the new products. New products. Okay, first up. First up, a uh, little we, reminder, we're giving away Raspberry Pi. We have Raspberry Pis, but we we're not a distributor, so we're going to just toss them in if you order enough stuff. Yeah, so order $350 of stuff. Here's and you get it for free. Raspberry Pis. So anyways, business giving these away. We're not going to sell them, we're going to give them away. Yeah. So that's Raspberry Pi. Okay, uh, next up. Okay, next up I have um, this barometric pressure. So this photo is better than the overhead, so I'm just going to uh, talk over this uh, photo. Can you go to the previous photo? Yeah. Just a photo of it. Um, so this is a, a low-cost barometric pressure sensor. It's the MPL-115A2. It's an I squared C-based uh, barometric pressure sensor. It's um, much, much cheaper than the BMP-085, which is our favorite uh, barometric pressure sensor. Everyone has their favorite. That's ours. Um, the only thing is that it's cheaper because it's not nearly as precise. It's a 150th of the precision. Or it's, it's, uh, instead of being able to measure, like, I think, like, 0 0.1 uh, hectopascal, uh, it's, like, 25 or something so it's not good for altitude uh, detection like you can't do you know really precision altitude whereas the BMP 085 is actually precise enough to do altitude um, based on what the sea level barometric pressure is it'll calculate your altitude so that's awesome um, this isn't good enough for that in our opinion so we don't suggest for that use but if you're just using it for barometric pressure sensing like you want to know what the barometric pressure is, or maybe you want to do some weather prediction, which you can do with um, barometric pressure. This sensor is totally fantastic and way cheaper than the BMP-085. So if you don't need that precision, uh, the sensor is great, and we have an Arduino library for it. And I've shopped around. This is the best deal for this uh, And, oh, it's, it's also 3 and 5 volt compatible, so we don't even have to, you uh, know, you can use it with your 5 volt or 3 volt microcontroller, all good. Don't it's, have to worry about level shifting. You don't have to level shift anything. It's, that's why the board's so small. And why we could offer for like fifteen dollars because it doesn't we don't have to include all this extra stuff. Okay, uh, someone had a question about this. Does our pick and place have any problems with this package? No, in fact, of the three hundred we pick and placed, all three hundred uh, were placed perfectly. We had full one hundred. That's like one hundred percent. One hundred percent yield. Woo. This was excellent. Um, the the pads were very clear on the bottom. Okay, someone wants to know: Is this good for telling your pressure in a vacuum chamber? Uh. If your vacuum cha chamber pressure is within the, the rated limits of the sensor, then yes. Yeah. Okay. Check the data sheet for the rated limits. Okay. Next up, perhaps our most exciting product yet. No, not really. USB extender. It's a USB extending <laughs> extender cable. It's a USB extender cable. Because uh, we have, like, sometimes you know, we have three foot cables, six foot cables. This cable is basically just 10 feet long. Um, and it has a USB-A on one side and USB-A mail on the other, so you can extend the cable. USB data rates are good for up to 15 feet. That's what they're rated for. But, you know, if you can connect this to a 6-foot cable for 16 feet, it'll probably be just fine. Um, yeah. And for power, um, you know, it's also like, you know, you'll, you'll drop a little bit of, this is 28-gauge this is or 26-gauge. Can't quite read it. Um, so... I mean, it's not great for, like, high-power uh, stuff, but for an Arduino something, if you just want to have just enough power so you can, like, stick your sensor out a window or something, this is, this is yeah. great. Okay. Um, we also put Ethernet cables in store, but, you know, Ethernet There's cables. Ethernet We're cables. just going to skip it. Yeah. <laughs> Next up. Um, these displays are gorgeous. They're bright. I'm going to yeah. hold this up because they're, they're bright. They're very bright. Yeah. Um, um, let me switch over bright. to the other camera here. Sure, yeah, we'll show them the overhead. I'm just going to yeah. show it in... in uh, oh. Want to go over? Oh. Yeah, look at this. It's so bright. These are beautiful. Mark. Bright! Um... Everything yeah, they're they're gorgeous. I mean, they're a little expensive, but they're the definitely overhead. worth it. So this is super bright, um, and I'm just running a simple test here. Uh, I have it on the I squared C backpack because there's just too many pins to wire it otherwise. Um, but yeah, it's got full seven segment, uh, you know, 0.56 inches high. It's got a, a colon in the middle for like time staff, and it's got four decimal dots. Um, it's really nice and bright. It's got a VF of like, you know, whatever, 3.5 or something. But all the LEDs are really clear. We, we're running them here constant current, and they're um, all really even. And it's a really nice crisp white. Um, not too cool, not too warm. Yeah. And then um, we also have it with the backpack because uh, it's really tough to control this many LEDs with that one. So our handy I2C backpack uses I2C. You can have up to eight of them uh, on a bus. And uh, we have Arduino code and everything, and also uh, Raspberry Pi code to oh. control these, so these are super easy. What's the difference between the regular LCD display and the one with the I2C backpack? Um, the backpack just makes it a lot easier to control them because you don't have to like constantly multiplex all the pins. Um, without it, I think you need like 14 digital pins, but with I2C you'll need two. Okay. Then here's some more photos of it. Uh, a couple of people want to know, or one person asking twice, uh, does that code that you're running come with uh yeah this is the example code that's the example code right on we slowed it up okay 
Yeah, it's cool because it looks fake in this photo. Yeah, that's like, a real photo. That's actually the photo. It's actually yeah. like so even Dude, that it just looks. It's, it's really all white. Okay, uh, next up, uh, we're selling wallets now. I'm actually well, these have are really one. great wallets. Yeah, so I actually is, have one. These are RFID blocking wallets. They're made out of stainless steel fabric. Yeah. Um, we actually bought one of these wallets two years ago, and we, we carried it around for two years. Yeah. So this and is then we were like, wallet. you know what? These wallets are so great. We should Sorry. carry them in the store. So I'll we'll show this off real quickly. Yeah. So we, since we sell RFID things, people always ask, well, can you have, do you have well, blocking it's a good, stuff? Well, it's a good match because like, a lot of people are like, well, I have RFID stuff, but I don't want it to like always be readable. So this is a stainless steel fabric, and the fabric wraps all the way around, so it completely blocks our stuff um, altogether. Yeah. And um, inside, it's got like card slots and some slots yeah, in here. Just and make sure you don't take cards out. No, I'm not going to yeah. show anybody your age or your real name. I don't care about that. <laughs> I, don't care. I actually don't care about anything. Just I don't want to like have to like call in my Amex or anything. Okay, no, no, I'm not going to play anything out. Yeah. Um, it comes with um, this high quality leather um, uh, strap here, which is really cool because it means that it's uh, flexible. But it won't it won't crack. It's not like made out of. Um, yeah. That's the problem with having it made out of. Um, like pleather or like vegan is stuff, it'll it'll crack and and yeah. break and so we decided to go with um, the high quality leather. We'll see if we can carry also the one that's made out of uh, all steel um, because that way if, if you don't want to have leather products we can have that too. So we have to ask them about that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the one we had lasted two years and it was still in really good condition and it wore very nicely as well. Yeah. So these are these are really sweet. This is one of those times where like you know we we find something we like so I had it for two years and I'm like you know what? we should just stock this. Yeah, I mean, it's not, like, directly an electronics accessory, but we do carry RFID stuff, including RFID stickers and RFID cards, and, like, people come to us to get RFID stuff, so we thought, yeah. well, this is an RFID blocking wallet. Okay. It's cool. Let's keep moving on. It's also a really good gift for an engineer, because, like, engineers are like, this is great, this is RFID blocking. Engineers like that. Okay, next up, we got these valves. Do you want to do these all at once? And then yeah. we'll get into a product. So here they are. These are these uh, valves. You guys like this. Yeah, I'll show this on and the other we're going to get to the questions. All right. You want to do it on the overhead? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so valves. the first valve, these are solenoid valves. Um, so here is a coil, and there's a little metal um, uh, core inside, and when you apply 12 volts DC to these two, it pulls um, on the inside and it opens up, basically, the connection between here and here. This one is a lower-cost plastic one. It's probably good for, like, gardening stuff, gardening projects. Or like other like watering projects, but like people tend to use them for like automated sprinkler systems or something like that. So this is what it's ideal for. Um, there's a little filter so you don't get like gunk in it. There's a little metal filter, and um, I took one apart and destroyed it to show how it works. So um, this is the the tube, and so water comes in. There's actually an arrow that says which way the yeah. So water comes in through the filter. And then it um, bubbles up around here, and then on the other side that I took off, there's this rubber gasket. And it's kind of hard to see, but when it gets pulled, when the coil activates, this gets pulled and the gasket pulls away, and um, it opens up the seal here, and so water can flow. So the thing about this one is this gasket actually, the, you do need a little bit of pressure to open it, like once it releases. So this isn't for standing water and it has to be, the water can only go one way. It has to push out onto the gasket to open it. So um, this is only good for like when you have water pressure over a certain amount. And I think it's like 0.1 uh, PSI or like one, I don't know what it's like, 5 PSI or something. But it's, it's in the uh, tech docs exactly what the pressure is. But it's good for like anything where you have a pump, but it's not good for like gravity fed water or anything like that. Or if you want to have bi-directional um, water flow. Um, what else about it? Um, we tried to use it down to 6 volts and it still works. So you, you don't have to use 12 volts if you have like a 9 volt power supply. You might be able to do that as well. Um, we also have a brass one. And these are used in water heaters. This is what these originally are for. Um, these are actually, um, they're much more rugged. Uh, they unfortunately need a lot more current. They need like 3 amps or so. Um, this is a really big coil. So it's like 3 amps at 12 volts and I think like 2 amps at 6 volts. Um, these, however, do not have the issue with the pressure. So this is, I'll show you on the inside, it actually opens up the gasket like really well. So you can use this with um, standing pressure water. It's also bi-directional. So if you want to open up a valve to connect, you know, two bodies of water, you can do that. Um, it's cast brass and then it's machined. So it's machined really flat and it works on the same basic uh, principles. The other one, the water comes in here or the other way. 
and then bubbles up here and then this gasket is what lets it through and so when the coil activates this gasket moves up and down and this gasket's made out of um, nitrile rubber and this is made out of brass so um, even though this one is not they're not rated for food safety this is not like a you know FDA approved rated device um, anything that is okay with brass and nitrile rubber you can use so um, you know whatever you're, you decide to use it with just check um, in like the MSDS for nitrile rubber or your um, fluid and just make sure it's you know good use for it um, this is also really good for like a gardening project or pool project um, it'll last a lot longer outside than the plastic one so if you want to like you know control outside water stuff I think yeah. I'd, I'd suggest the brass one it's, it's a lot more rugged and the nice thing about these is they use 12 volt DC not AC a lot of like you know sprinkle projects require AC and then like kind of pain in the ass because then you're like yeah where do I get the AC from or some of them are 120 volts AC which is kind of not good I don't want to ship 120 VAC around my yard except for you know when I have it coming into the house yeah but I mean, we have seen a lot of solenoids that use it so this would be good for a lot of like gardening projects pool projects um, aquarium projects mm. I think if you're doing like you know an at-home like the refrigerator this would probably be okay I mean this is not okay for food production production but for like a home project you know, as long as like you know your liquid can touch, you know, a nylon rubber safely, then um, yeah. you're pretty good to yeah. go. Okay, very so good. Um, someone knows it failing close. Oh, sorry. Both of these um, are by default closed, and you have to activate them to open them. So fail closed. Then. Is that what fail closed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, natural, like normally closed. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what your failure mode is. If your failure is failure is that the power is applied to the coil, it will fail open. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they are normally closed, and you have to apply current to the coil to open them. Yeah, yeah I once, um, for a project at, at work, uh, had a solenoid-driven pinch valve, and uh, I actually selected it to be normally closed because that made sense to me. Like, oh, yeah, like when I'm not driving it, I want that, that to be shut and, you know, the side for the spring return to be on to force it shut. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I just made a fail unsafe device because, like, if you lose power or air pressure for any reason because it was a pneumatic solenoid valve, then it would be you know, a crush hazard. And I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. okay. would have been better to have it configured to fail yeah, open. Yeah, usually for, like, actually, oh, it's interesting. Apparently, the brass one can also do air. It's actually airtight. So you could do air yeah. with this. Although I've. Someone's going to ask, are the, is it airtight? It is, it is apparently. I mean, it says, like, that this was used for, that this is specifically designed for water heaters and for, um,. Apparently, like also like uh, oil, you can use it. It's it's yeah. because the NBR is oil safe. Although I don't, I mean, I don't know anything about that. And also, apparently, it's airtight. Although I don't have a compressor with a quarter inch uh, NPT threads <laughs> on it, so I don't know how I would test it. <laughs> but um, I, I believe that this is um, they're both and they're, yeah, and they're both one half inch NPT nominal. So it's you know that's really really common. Almost everything has an adapter from half inch NPT nominal. Um, so I don't think you should have any difficulty yeah. with it. No, local hardware store will have any adapter you need from one half inch. So I think sure. you can buy brackets on these to mount them on the stuff. So we should try to find those brackets. If anyone well, knows about never, those, you know uh, email us. I don't have a bracket, but this is this lug. No, this is the lug for the yeah. for attachments. But this one has these really nice four. Um, those they look, look like quarter twenty. Yeah, they're not out of the quarter twenty. They're probably metric actually. Um, but. Um, you could extend, you know, use very long versions and then bolt it into something. My concern about using this for air um, would actually be the, the quarter NPT threads. Like, attaching yeah. things and, like, actually trying to get, like, a night. It's it's a lot easier to get a watertight seal than it is to get an airtight seal when you're, like, screwing pipes together. Dude, I don't know. I'm just saying it's apparently it's specced for it. But I, I, when I got these four, people who are doing, basically, people were saying, hey, I want to do, like, a pool project. Mm -hmm or a gardening project I want to control, like sprinklers. Yeah. And we got a lot of people requesting that. So that's that's what we are carrying these for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, there are, you know, if you want to like go and get like hardcore valve solenoids for air, for food manufacture, um, McMaster Car will sell them to you for $500. Um, <laughs> and you should totally use those. But if you're just doing a hobbyist project, these are probably just fine. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, that was new products. Good work. <coughs> new, new, new products. That was new products.